Hi, I'm Bart Hansen. I'm the owner and lead instructor for CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record at 4.45 p.m. Pacific time every Monday. If you want to call in your hand, check out the instructions in the video description. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is a California Grand of the Bay Area. Okay. Um, three blind system, 223 with a button, puts in the third blind. Yep. Um, I'm about 500 effective. Villain is uh, about 420. Okay. No information uh, on the player. Seemed like a competent player. I only played with him for like, you know, an hour. Um, I'm there pretty regularly. I don't see him that often. But, uh, yeah, he seemed like a competent player. Um, it folds all the way around to me. Uh, I'm in, I'm on the, um, I'm in a small blind. Um, I have, uh, two red tens. So you guys don't chop in this particular spot, really? We do. Um, you know, I usually, I, I mean, I've chopped with aces when I'm in the big blind. It's just kind right. of like a, it's like an unwritten rule there, especially at the California Grand. But, uh, that kind of put me, I offered chop. And um, even with two red tens, and he said no. So I realized that he <laughs> the big blind. You mean yeah, you offered in the middle of the hand, or like before the hand? Yeah, well, that's what happens when the button folds. Oh, the right, the right, button. right. Yeah, that those three blind configurations. Yeah, it's really weird. Like the three blind configurations, and I play up at the bay. First of all, I always forget that I have a little bit of a blind on the button. And uh, yeah. I overfold. Like, I don't over limp when Absolutely. I should basically over limp with any two because um, I'm getting such a price. And then I don't, like, I fold and then people are like, chop. Anyways, it's weird. Okay, so you've got ten, <laughs> tens in the small blind. Okay, yep. Yeah, absolutely. And this is like 98% always chop. So that yeah. kind of confused me a little bit. But I made it 15. Yeah. Um, um, and he called. Okay. Uh, didn't take too long. Okay. Um, about 37 in the pot. Yep. Um, the flop is a uh, deuce, deuce, seven rainbow. Oh, this hand's great. You guys are going to love this one yeah. in the chat. Yeah. Deuce, deuce, seven rainbow. Okay. Pretty good flop for you. Yeah. 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 Uh, really good flop for me. Um, a lot of the time I think, uh, and, uh, so I'm a tournament player. So I, I've, you know, I've watched you a lot and I've kind of been trying to figure out, um, you know, the optimal betting sizes in here. Uh, I led for 20. I think that's pretty standard. Not nah, just because to, just to get exactly. ace highs and stuff to call, but okay. So you lead for twenty. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he took about ten seconds. He called. Uh, I figured this is going to a lot of these times king queen ace high. Then they'll never fold in this spot, especially a reg. Um, yeah. So I was happy to get money in there with that the tens. Um, you know, so the turn um, there's about seventy seven in the pot. The turn is another two. Um, this is where it becomes pretty crazy. Um, the the button now goes, you know, he screams for fuck, you know, and then he screams at his buddy, I had a two. So we can deduce the two from his range for four, you know, four of a kind. Yeah. Uh, not saying that, you know, that would be there likely anyways, but so that that's going to put a little caveat in his hand. Mm. Um, I, I led for 40. So the pod is like, um, the pod's like 77, the board's deuce, deuce, yeah. seven, deuce. You bet 40. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I really like my hand, uh, obviously. And um, I still thought I could get with the guy saying the deuce. You know, that guy realized that. I mean, I think I could still get a lot of ace highest calls. Sure. Know, fours through sixes. No, yeah. absolutely, yeah. So he takes about 20 seconds, and um, he called. Um, you know, I, yeah. I'm confident in you know, non-face card. I'm I mean, I, I, blast I think... I think in this extreme configuration where it's like blind versus blind, unless you've got some sort of crazy read where some, I'm just going to look at this hand like the guy wasn't chopping. Because there's a live intangible yeah. here where like he might not be chopping because he's got aces. So I don't know if that's like, it, like if he has been chopping before and then you look down and you're like chopping, he's like, no, that has to stick out in the back of your mind if he had chopped before. This is just a little live wiggle. But if we're just playing this without that, sort of information right i would tend to go a yeah. little bit larger but you bet 40 into 77 he calls the pot's 157 right and he's yeah. got yeah. like what 360 left so about two pot size bets left okay what's the river yeah the river is a six uh no flush um really safe card for our hand obviously and um i honestly thought about checking and you know letting him 
blast off with anything, you know, any, any six, you know, King Queen, Ace Highs that think that I might be just giving up here. Um, nah, I'm not a big fan. I mean, if but, you heard the, yeah. here's the thing with that, Doug, is that again, live players don't value bet enough. Now, with that being said, with that being said, there is a live player even at two two three might bet a seven here, right? It's deuce deuce seven deuce six, right? Which is a full house. Yeah. But for you to check to get the player to value own themselves or also to basically um, bluff. They would either have to have a bluff that they're calling with the flop and the turn with, which would be like a non ace high Broadway hand, or like, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, or have ace high and bet at the end, and that's not going to happen. They're just going to check it back. So that's why I would never, I would never check here. Never, never, never okay. check here. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. that's what I've, my group was going back and forth with. Oh, it's pretty split. Small blind but versus big blind? Was... What group? What? Yeah, tell me the, you. tell me the group that split with you. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them are listeners. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, and um, I thought this was a no value, a no brainer. I mean, I, I just it, it's just a no brain brainer spot. If I get stacked, I get stacked. Uh, I let out a hundred. Okay, so you're betting a hundred into about one sixty, one fifty seven, roughly. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, uh, what do you think about that sizing? I think I would probably go a little bit smaller. I'm trying to get the call. Yeah. I would have gone larger early and then smaller here at the end. You see what I'm saying? Larger okay. early and smaller yeah. here at the end. But, okay. you know, it's whatever. So, um, yeah. by the way, too, like if you had a hand like aces here, okay, just as a caveat, I probably would just go larger throughout all, every street because then there's less of a chance that your opponent has ace high and is calling you down, more of a chance that they have a pair. That's just a little side thing, specifically with aces. I might go like 50 to 75. Okay, so you bet 100 into 177. Okay. Yes, I agree with you on the aces sentiment too. But um, yeah, I made it 100, and he thought for about 40 seconds. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty... Uh, hip to like what you know people are doing with their cards. He was shuffling it. Uh-huh. He kind of did the uh, you know almost like the fake muck, and he you know he was sighing a little bit of Hollywood. So yeah, I, I kind of picked up on that, and he ended up shoving on me for about another. I think it was three twenty, three sixty. I don't. I think it's three twenty. So um, three twenty total. Total. Three twenty total, total. Right. Yeah. So so the pot's what forty, and it's like mm, fifty seven. What did you said it was you raised twenty pre. So uh, yeah. sixty eighty one twenty one sixty two sixty three sixty and another two twenties about five eighty two twenty for you to call if my math is right. Yes. So yes, right. here's the thing. Like as crazy as it seems. You can really overfold in spots like this. Now, I'm not saying that I'm going to fold because I, I would just look at your hand as a bluff catcher here, really. And that, I mean, some guys, it's not super, super common, Doug, but some guys will just try to like put you to the test at, you know, even at the small stakes if he's like maniacal. But let me just say this I don't think he's doing this with a worse value hand. Okay. So he either has okay. you beat or he's bluffing. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I mean, that's there's not it's not he's not doing this with like six seven or pocket eights or pocket nines. That's what I really feel like. So at five eighty for two twenty, you know what do you lose to here? Well, you lose to a deuce, right? You lose to pocket sevens and you lose no to po- deuces. Yeah, you lose to a guy, but yeah, you lose to yeah. You didn't think yeah. So you lose to pocket sevens and pocket sixes, and then like I said, I don't know if there's that caveat in there where he said don't chop and he could have aces here mm-hmm. too. So if he doesn't exactly. have a deuce, but he's got sevens and sixes and aces. That's 12 hands. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, it would be an exploitable fold. I have made folds like this before. It's a bluff catcher. You have a bluff catcher. So I can't sit here and tell you whether or not you should call versus this guy or not, but I want you to recognize that it's a bluff catcher. What did you end up doing? I mean, I honestly thought about – I've been trying to be more exploitive in these, in these situations just because I've, I've – you know, I've really been able to, you know, harness my life skills the past few years, and that's been more um, profitable from just my place. Sure. But uh, I really thought about folding, and I, I didn't, I just didn't know if he would do this with aces or, or eights or nines. 
No, that's um, no way. I that's. Yeah. I mean, if you talk yourself into that, then okay. I mean, I can get it, but that's just that. I'm not. He's not going to turn over eights. Uh, he's not going to turn over eights and nines. I'm sorry. I just there, there's just no way. Have you ever heard of this? It sounds to me like you called and you lost. I don't know the result. Was that what happened? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I called. Um, you know, after about 45 seconds, and uh, he turned over sevens full. Yeah. Which makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, you know, the guy yelling out the deuce was kind of an interesting part of this hand. He actually got a penalty for that. But uh, he got a penalty? What is it? This isn't a cash yeah. game. It's not a tournament, and is it? Cash game, like, they made him sit out for like, it was really weird. But uh, Why would they do that? Uh, That's so stupid. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. And I didn't even complain. That's I crazy. Complain. Yeah, that's the crazy. The dealer called the floor. Yeah. Wow. So I agree. Yeah, it's just uh, you know I think now that I back look back at his hand, you're right. I don't think that uh, it is a bluff catcher. As crazy as that sounds. There um, are. I mean, there are situations. Yeah, there are situations like this where it's a bluff catcher. Thank you for your patience, Doug. Thanks for the. Hey guys, if you like what you've seen here, please click on the subscribe button and you'll get notified every time we put up a new video. And if you want to check out CrushLivePoker.com for the first month free, use the code YTA200, click on the link right there.